In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert from the RAD list box to the new and improved RAD list control introduced in the Q2 2010 release of RAD controls for WinForms. So as you can see, I currently have a WinForms application open that I've been working on, and the top area of this application actually contains a RAD list box that is currently working in unbound mode, meaning that I've just simply added items directly to its items collection. And if I click on one of these items, it calls an event in the code behind uh, that determines which item was selected and then updates the corresponding label. At the bottom of this form, I have another RAD list box, and this RAD list box is in data bound mode. So it has a collection of items that has been bound to its data source property. So when I click on one of these items, it also does the same thing that the top RAD list box does, and it just updates the corresponding label below that RAD list box. So let's go ahead and update this application to use the new RAD list control in place of these old RAD list box controls. So I'm going to close out and switch over to Visual Studio. And let's go ahead and start by dragging out the RAD list control into our form. So the first RAD list control is actually going to work in unbound mode. So I'm going to go ahead and add the five items you see that are currently in our RAD list box. So I'm going to click the smart tag and select edit items. And then I'll add five items to this rad list control and then click OK. And the next thing I need to do is actually implement the event that tells me which item the user has clicked on. And if we look at the rad list control and come over here to its event properties, it's actually using an event called selected index changed. Well, the new rad list control actually contains a similar event to this. So if I click on that and then come back over here to the event properties, we can see there is also a selected index change for it as well. And normally, if these events were exactly the same, we would simply be able to click this drop down and have the rad list control use that other selected index changed event handler. But unfortunately, the event arguments have actually changed between these releases. So we're going to have to go ahead and implement uh, this event by itself. So we're going to create a new event handler specific to the rad list control. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this and jump into the code behind. And as you can see, it's created uh, a new event handler for me. And before we actually type any code in this, uh, as you can see right above this is the old event handler being used by the rad list box. And what this is doing is it's actually just setting the text property on a label to the selected items text. So we just simply need to do the same exact exact thing in our new event handler. So I'm going to say label selected item unbound dot text equals red list control one dot selected item dot text. And now that we have our new event handler implemented, uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase the old event. And then let's jump back up here into the form designer. And I'm going to erase the old rad list box as well, because we're no longer going to need that. And then I'll just move our new rad list control over and click Save. And let's take a look at this in action and see if it worked. So here's our application up and running. And now when I click the items on the new rad list control, we can see that it's doing the same thing that the rad list box was doing before. And it's updating our label to tell us which item that we've clicked. So let's take a look at converting the rad list box in data bound mode to a rad list control in data bound mode. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the form and jump back over to Visual Studio once again. And let's go ahead and start once again by dragging out another rad list control. And since we're using a data bound mode, this is actually going to be quite a bit easier. Because our rad list box, if we take a look at its data source property, it's actually bound to my item binding source which is this item right here instead of our component bin. And this ca takes care of all of our data binding stuff for us. So to actually bind this binding source to our new red list control, I simply need to come back, come back to the red list control, make sure it's selected, then jump over here to its data source property. And then I can simply select that same exact binding source. And then I also need to make sure to set the display member. So if we click this, we can see that the object I'm binding to contains a name and a value. And for the display member, I'm going to use name. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, I also need to make sure to set the value member. And I'll go ahead and set that to value. And then finally, all, all I need to do is select the old rad list box. I can just simply delete it from the form. And I'm going to move the rad list control into its place. 
And the way this is actually working with our label is if we select this label right here, I'm not using an event in the code behind this time since I'm using data binding. Uh, so if we look at the data bindings property for this label, you can see that the text property is actually bound to that my item binding source to the name property. And since that binding source is now being managed by our red list control, uh, this label will automatically reflect uh, the changes that the red list control makes in the binding source. So we don't actually need to make any updates to this particular label. So I'll go ahead and click save and let's take a look at the application in action now. So as you can see, it's picked up all of the items from my binding source. And if I click on these items, we can see that the label gets updated uh, with the item that I've clicked on. So that's pretty much all it takes to convert a RAD list box to the new RAD list control included with the new release of RAD controls for WinForms. Thanks for watching.